All right, everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Life from the Lair. And today, um, I'm answering an email that I got a while back. Uh, I'm sorry it took this long to get to it. Uh, and this particular individual was asking me to put together a video for his two younger sons in regards to... Uh, all of the lying and manipulation that's taking place out there in current year and the just absolute inside out bullshit from the current dating market. Relationships, you call it whatever you want. Some people call it hell. Know anyone who could use a good ass chewing? I could use a good ass kick and I'll be very honest with you. But what if you could get that message delivered by an authentic drill instructor who spent 33 years in the army? Ha ha ha! You asked for it. For just 35 bucks, you can get a customized knife hand ass chewing for a person of your choice straight from the popster. I think you aren't even good enough to whiff the thoughts from a dog's ass. And monthly supporters of the regiment receive a $10 discount. I am hard, but I am fair. Use the Cash App code on the screen to send your donation along with notes on the person whose ass needs chewing. And the popster will handle the rest. So, shut the fuck up! If you go back to the Old Testament, even the New Testament, there's all kinds of stories and proverbs in there about women who are really good at lying, stealing, manipulating, and stabbing people in the back. All right. Now, I'm not saying men don't do that as well, because they do. Uh, let's face it, we're evil, hairless monkeys. But I will give, basically, women um, credit for being exceptionally good at this and showing up already pre-programmed how to lie and manipulate. Now, I know there's some women out there like, Pop, it's not, all women aren't like that. No, you're right. All is 100%. Most, that's a big number, and that number is between 51% and 99%. Dang, I hate math. So, gentlemen, if you're out there and you're in a relationship and you're still trying to get a feel for what's going on, maybe this list of hints can assist you in calling them liars. Let us begin. Number one on this list. Now, this is just, you know, a little co comedic relief here. If her mouth is moving, she's lying. Let, let, let's pretend that's not true. Yeah. yeah. Now, I know people are like, Pop, that is just so mean. Well, listen, I'm 55 years old, been Dear John twice, divorced once, been through the ringer. And I'm going to be honest, most, if not all, of the women I've had to deal with have lied directly to my face at some point or another, including my own mother. All right, number two, unusual face and body movements. Now, if you're in a relationship with a woman, you're going to understand and um, you're going to get basically up to speed on her normal behaviors and her facial expressions and what have you. All right, now, when you're making these inquiries, asking you know, in uncomfortable questions, you're going to see different faces. All right, they're going to get, there's always a tell there. Women, in my opinion, unless they train for it, are terrible poker players because, let's face it, if you give her enough rope, they hang themselves down the road. I wasn't lying. I never lie. All right, goes pale or blushes. Now, in today's day and age, current year, there's a lot of narcissistic women out there, and no matter what you say to them, you're not going to get that kind of reaction. They're not going to go pale, and they're not going to blush, but there are some women out there who will do that. Not all of them, but you need to get up to speed on uh, you know, these body movements and tells to make you go, hmm, maybe you should inquire more. All right, number three, or f number four, sorry about that. Changes in breathing. All right. Now, if you ask somebody a shocking question that uh, rattles something inside, you're going to get the... 
because they're preparing to lie or they're dealing with a flood of adrenaline that just went through their system because there's always that fear of, oh, shit, I'm busted. There you go. (laughs) Five, lack of eye contact. Now, if you're with this woman for a while and she speaks to you, you're going to have eye contact. You know, it's going to become normal. That's just the way it is. If you're asking her questions and you start, she starts looking off the line or looking aside or looking down, that's not good. Again, you have to be up to speed on this particular individual you're dealing with to get a baseline for what's normal and what's not. My brave young girl, why won't you look at me? Six, touching face, hair, fidgeting, stuff like that. I know this should put in you know, unusual face and body movements, but they're kind of different. For instance, back in the day while I was dating in my youth, I went out with a couple women for, you know, a decent amount of time, you know, eight months, a year and a half here and there. You get used to, you know, what they do. And you ask them some uncomfortable stuff, they might lie about it. You start getting the the touching the neck, you know, touching their face, you know, reaming the hands, stuff like that. It's all the tell. Because let's face it, this is a big poker game. The, the biggest poker game of life you will ever fucking play. All right, it's right here, and I'm trying to help you, you know, stay in the game for as long as you can, and maybe you'll take a few wins. Because if you don't know how this works, you know, the poker game of life, which is all lying, you're screwed. Winning was blind luck. Seven. And this is actually, uh, I've seen this in some Hispanic women. You're talking to them, and all of a sudden you ask them some sensitive questions that you know you have some curiosities about and you see them close their fists well uh that's basically an emotional response anger or rage depending upon where uh where you are on the scale and how bad the lie was and how bad the consequences will be like if she went out and decided to bang half a fire department, you ask her about it, she clenched her fist, she knows she's busted, the consequences are you leaving. That will cause anger. Clench fists. Be aware. All right? Uh, eight, and I saw this all the time in, in the military. You'd be talking to guys, and you ask them questions, and they just kind of look at you and go, you know, most of the time, if they don't know, they're just like, I, I don't know. But if they look at you and go, that should be a tell. All right. They're basically trying to tell you they don't know without actually speaking. Because let's face it, you can catch them in the details. And women, if you let them talk long enough, will tell on themselves at some point. Well, that's not true. It is true. All right. Next. Nine. Blinking excessively. I've known a couple women... I asked him some pretty crazy questions. You start getting the, the the quick blinking. I don't know why that happens. Some people uh, just react that way. Not all of them. And a lot of the stuff on this list with the current year, narcissistic women are probably not going to be major tells. Okay. Uh, Ten, just a general unease. All right, you start talking to them, you ask them uncomfortable questions, they start shuffling around or, you know, looking, you know, they're just, you can tell they're not at ease because they're lying to your face. What difference at this point does it make? Eleven, puts objects between you and her, i.e. walking around one side of a car, even crossing their arms, uh, they're putting their arms between you and, and them. You know, that that's a big one right there. Now, prior service people, usually at some point when they get a little fatigued or tired, will, you know, shoulder width apart and do this and just observe. All right. So if they're not, you know, in the military or they have no military background, whenever you see this, more than likely what is she, what she's saying to you is a lie. You all full of shit, okay? All right, next. Short answers. Listen, there's a lot of women out there that know the longer they talk, the greater the chance of them 
getting caught. So they're like, they'll give you short answers. No, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, they don't want to elaborate. They don't want to, you know, go too much into the story because that's where the stories fall apart. We've all watched enough crime novels or shows on TV that were that came from crime novels. And when the story changes, the details change, more than likely you're dealing with a liar. You're a terrible liar. 13, word stumbles. Um, if you catch them in a lie or you start questioning them about something that happened and they start stumbling on their words, most of the time that is a panic response and they're burning up a lot of bandwidth and they're thinking meat. So you, you get a lot of that. And uh, not all, again, not all of them will do it. Just saying, just, just be aware. Next, 14. You have the short answers, and then you have some women that over-explain. All right. You ideally want that to happen because the more they explain, the more details get uh, released, and you start picking at the details. A lot of times you're going to find out right up front they're lying to you. Again, you let them talk. They will eventually tell on themselves. I suck at this. 15. Unwarranted emotional swings. All right, you start talking to them, you ask some questions, all of a sudden they get angry. Or they, or they get real sad. Or they laugh in your face. They tell you you're full of shit, this is a joke. All right. Again, if you're with this particular woman for a while, you understand the roller coaster of her emotions, you know, barring, you know, medication changes and stuff like that, because let's face it, most women in the West are out of their goddamn minds. All right, so again, unwarranted emotional swings. A lot of times the women will do that to throw up a smoke screen to try to get you off the scent, or they will try to change the subject. 16, <laughs> challenge inquiries with guilt and shame. So, like, for instance, while I was, you know, before my divorce started, you know, I had approached my ex and explained to her that, you know, I had satellite imagery of where her car had been parked and what she'd been up to. And the first thing she said, so now you're spying on me? When it gets to this point, gentlemen, it doesn't fucking matter. All right? Because they know they're caught, and they're trying to basically stop you using guilt and shame and a lot of men out there, especially historically, have marched to their deaths because of guilt and shame. Well, today, in current year, don't be that victim. It doesn't work for me. All right, 17. The story changes. Now, you might get a story from, from them the first time you talk to them. All right, a couple days goes by. You inquire again. Something changes. Now listen, when the story changes, the details change, the premise of their answers more than likely is a pile of bullshit. All right? Gentlemen, this is important here. All right? Anytime the story changes, you know some shit is going on. Now, you know, the law enforcement, they'll come in. They'll talk to you the first time. They write down what you have to say. They'll talk to you again, and then they'll write down what you say. Then they compare and see how much it changes. If there are major changes in the story, they're going to throw away your testimony and call you a fucking liar. That's the way it should be in the real world, and don't let emotions get in the way. Maintain calm, cool collective mindset use logic and reason you can tear apart all of these lies all day every day on a month of sundays all right 18 fake smile all right now again if you're with this woman for you know a, a certain period of time you will understand her facial expressions what makes her happy what makes her sad and what have you if you're talking to her and you're not getting facial expressions 
that uh, coincide with the subject you're talking about, more than likely they're putting up a facade. It's camouflage. They want to get away with whatever it is you know, you're talking to them about, and there you go. 19, details fade. You let them talk, all right? They go on for a long time. They give up a lot of details. You wait a couple days. You ask them again. If the details are not there, the story is changing, or the details change, you're being lied to straight up. And finally, 20, fearful look. I think I peed myself again. This is actually fairly common, especially for women who have been cheating and are married. Because a lot of these women today think they can do that and get away with it. They'll get another chance or they'll get divorced and, you know, they'll have the golden parachute of cash and prizes they get for uh, swapping out husbands. All right. If you are in a position of authority, you're on your game and, um, you know, you're a, an individual with value. When you confront them, there will always be the look of fear. Because, like, holy shit, this is going to come to an end. And they can't hide it. Now, I'm not telling you there are, are not women out there who are absolutely sociopathic and narcissistic to the core that can literally look you in the face and say whatever they want and uh, to be honest, you won't be able to tell a difference. Now, those people get paid a lot of money. They're called actors. They literally make a living lying and deceiving in front of a camera to make it look real for you, the audience. Normal people walking around in the street don't have those abilities for the most part. You might come into a few here and there. But if you know the tells for the poker game of life, you'll be able to win a couple hands and come out on top. Now, I hope this video was uh, informative for you. Um, I apologize for taking so long to get uh, back to this, but I've had a lot of turmoil going on in my life as of late, and uh, it just is what it is. Now, for all of you that out there who are tracking the situation with my mom, uh, she is home from the hospital. And uh, I've been staying over there for the most part uh, every night for the past, you know, two weeks, week and a half, trying to get her uh, strength back, making her walk, drink water, all the shit. Because let's face it, when you get older and you start losing muscle mass and, and what have you, life gets a lot more difficult. That's why I always preach the 65 and out plan, at least for me. All right, anyway. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you find this uh, information useful. You guys have a good day, and I will talk to you later. <laughs>